Hey guys, Dion here with Your Guitar Academy and in this lesson we're going to be taking a look at this really cool palm muted single note percussive guitar part that really supports the rhythm and the pulse of this particular piece. So this is a really common thing in Tom Misch's music where you often hear it, there'll be a kind of chordal part, a kind of a synth part as well, not always but often, obviously the bass guitar part and then in addition to the kind of groovy chordal guitar part there will sometimes be a kind of single note, uh, like a sort of double tracked thing that's often panned. Little things like that that just really underpin the chordal movement and really almost help out the bass guitar as well. So we're going to be learning the um, little palm muted guitar part in this piece in this lesson. So grab your guitar and let's get going. If you've just joined us, don't forget you can head straight to the website to get all the additional course materials including tabs, chord boxes, backing tracks, all entirely free and also please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We always love to hear how you're getting on with the material. Let me play through exactly what this little part is at first and then we're going to work through it and also hear it with the looper in combination with our chords. So it goes something like this. Four. So it's very, very percussive and it's very, very rhythmic and it's just, as I said previously, it's kind of like a supporting part to the bass and the drums. You know, it's it's not, yes, it's outlining the kind of chordal harmony, but it's not giving us loads of info. It's just there to kind of serve as a bit more of a groove, um, you know, an, a groove underpin almost. So let's take a look at the first part. So obviously the first part we're playing, the first bar, should I say, playing a D minor seven chord to a G13, which functions as a G, G7. Um, so the first bar goes, so one and two and three e and a. So the first four notes are just eighth notes. Okay, so we're playing fifth fret on A, seventh fret on D, fifth fret on D, eighth fret on A. And you'll see as well, I'm doing some pretty heavy palm in there. So, and I'm also down picking all of those. You want to get a really kind of percussive, far, you know, hard attack on the notes. One and two and one and two and, okay? That's for our D minor seven chord. Then for the G13, we have one E and A. Remember it's swung though, so one E and A. So with this, we're just playing two notes of the G, just separated by an octave. Down, down pick on the third fret of E, and then on this one, I like to up pick it, one E and E. Okay, that's the fifth fret of D, moving between our first and fourth fingers. And for that final note there, I like to release the palm mute a little bit so it sort of jumps out a bit. So, so far that gives us one and two and two and and one and two and three E and A. Yeah, so with the drums. Let's just go a little bit faster actually. Let's go up to about 75. So, two, three, four. Bit slower. 
There we go, so that's the first bar there. You'll see as well, I switched to my position two on my Strat here because you get a kind of a nice, like a, a, a responsive sort of trebly sound for this, which really works for this particular percussive style. Okay, bar number two, which uh, is when we land on the C major seven chord, move up to the C sharp diminished. So we start this bar with two 16th notes on the one E, just on the root note of C. So just like that, nice and choppy. And I just do down up. One E and a two E and a one E and a two E and a one E and a two E and a. And then really simply on beat three and four, we just go three, four. So that's the fourth fret of the A string. And what I like about that is that it's just, we've got a kind of hmm. Just being really deliberate with those quarter notes there kind of solidifies the pulse a little bit. So we could quite easily go like that, but I just like the idea of doing one of them, two sixteenth notes, little rest, and then three, four. It's really driving that home. So, so far, the first two bars that gives us. Like that. So one and two and three e and four and one e and a two e and a three and four and there we go. So you can hear the chord movement in what we're playing there. Okay, then uh, third bar along, we have exactly the same rhythm as the first bar, but the notes are just slightly different. With this time we go. So we're still implying the sound of this D minor seven chord, but we're now just going five, seven, eight on the A string, and then the seventh fret on D. Remember the first bar was, this time we're just doing a slight variation. Cool, and then we go, same thing as previously, three E and up on the um, third fret of E to the fifth fret of D. And then again, the bar number four, we do one E and a two E and a one E, two E and a, and then we have this interesting pattern for the F9 chord. So this goes, so this goes three and four E and a. So a little cheeky 16th note on the E of four there. So we have six on E, on A, sorry, five on D, and then Four E, so that's an upstroke there on the eighth fret of D. Four, four and sorry, three and four E and uh, three and four E and. Okay, so the second part, bars two, uh, sorry, three and four, go something like this. Yeah. So now with our drums, let's hear what it sounds like. Two, three, four, and. And again. Yeah, so. Now the real way to hear how this sort of part functions is if I loop the chordal part and then I play this over the top. Okay, so let me just grab my looper and I'm gonna include the root notes this time just because we haven't got a backing track. So I'm just gonna play through this and then add that part on top. Here we go. That's our chord part. So I recorded that on the neck pick up there. Let me now switch to position two and you'll hear how it really jumps out this part. Here we go. Mm -hmm. 
once more. So you'll hear as well, I'm occasionally adding in a couple of little kind of ghost notes, you know, little percussive elements there. And really, I'm imagining my pick is moving, you know, the 16th note pattern this whole time because it helps me retain that pulse and know, you know, where I am with the groove. Um, so yeah, that's kind of all the kind of rhythm guitar components to this piece here. Um, just take your time with both. If you've got a looper, um, see if you can do what I just did, loop one part and play the other. And of course you can use the backing tracks as well. We've got full speed, 10% slower and 20% slower as well for you to um, hone your skills with that. Um, most importantly, just really tap into that groove, get that nice percussive feel for the single note part and that nice groovy feel for the finger, finger style part. And uh, yeah, have fun with that. And I'll see you in the next unit for some lead guitar. Thanks a lot for joining us guys. So if you wanna head back to the start of the course, you can click here. And if you wanna move on to the next video, you can click here. Also, please don't forget to like, subscribe and comment because we always love to hear how you've got on with the course.